He could do anything he wanted because he was the king. And he went to the house of the Lord. And when he went into the house of the Lord, he had a censer in his hand. For he was determined to burn incense unto God. Now, it could have been that Uzziah just wanted to come to give an offering unto the Lord. Maybe Uzziah said, I've given the best of my sheep year after year unto the Lord. I've given the best of my young bulls unto the Lord year after year. I've given all of this. But God, this time, I want to come into the holy place. I want to come into the altar of incense and I want to put incense upon that altar that makes a sweet smell unto the Lord. But see, that wasn't for him to do. That was for only the priest to do. If we try to do something that it's not our place to do, we'll get in trouble. If you have a calling on your life, he's in a church and was going through pastoral changes and everybody was nervous, everybody was worried who was going to come to be the pastor and People were coming and they were trying out to preach and, and some had been pastors at other churches and some had been evangelists and, and they'd come from all different spectrums. And God spoke to me and He said, Do not operate outside of your calling. See, the truth is in the seven, 16 years of ministry now, I've not preached a whole lot of revivals. I've preached several. But I didn't preach 15 or 20 or 50 a year. Because that's not my calling. My calling was to pastor. There's other men, their calling is to evangelize. They're called to bring revival. They're called to have that anointing upon their life. And God told me, don't ever operate outside of your anointing. If you're a teacher, teach. If you're a pastor, pastor. If you're an evangelist, evangelize. If you're called to be an apostle, be an apostle. If you're called to be a prophet, be the prophet. But don't try to operate outside of your anointing just because you think you can. Uzziah could have probably done a good job of offering his incense unto the Lord. But that wasn't his job. That was just for the priest to do. Now the Word of God said that when Uzziah had come to offer that incense, that four score priests withstood him. That is 80 priests of God. Now, Brother Luke, they wasn't just 80 feeble priests. The Word of God, I believe, said these were valiant men. These men of God, Brother Jerry, had some muscles. They had some backbone to them. They had some strength to them. So here comes the king... And the high priest and 80 other priests are withstanding him. Uzziah, don't do it. He wasn't warned one time. He was warned 81 times. Do not go in there. It's not for you to do. But in an act of defiance. I was with somebody the other day. And they looked at their kids and said, don't go in there. I said, you should have told them just to run all over the place. And then they probably wouldn't have went in. But because you said don't go in there, I guarantee you the first thing they're going to do is go in there. <laughs> it's in the human nature. That's <coughs> I can do whatever people tell me not to do. Uzziah come in, 81 withstood him. They were trying every way in the world to stop him. But he got wroth with them. He got angry with them. How many know the, the Scripture? Do my prophets no harm. And touch not my anointed. May I tell you that's a powerful Scripture. If I could ever warn you of anything, don't ever do a prophet of God harm. 
and don't ever speak against his anointing. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because just as you can testify to me, I can testify to you of people I knew that have rose up against a man or woman of God or spoke against an anointed person of God and bad things come upon them. And they were good people. If they're God's chosen, they're God's anointed, don't speak again. Maybe it's just not the way you want to see things done. Well, that's fine. Not everything's going to please me. Not everything's going to please you. But if it's God's anointing, don't touch it. Amen. When Uzziah got wroth with the priest of the Lord, all of a sudden, something hit him. I believe in his moment of anger, Brother Jerry, something got out. Priest are looking at him. And all of a sudden his skin changed on his forehead. Those priests had a commandment from Moses. If anybody had a skin disease, if they had a skin disorder, they were ordered to go to the priest of the Lord. And the priest would deem them clean or unclean. That priest was a doctor, wasn't he? He was a doctor of the law. They would say, yes, it is leprosy. Or, no, it's not. I have a good friend and his health has been deteriorating. His dad, I think it was Parkinson's disease he had. And he passed away. And now his son is getting older and he's having health problems. And he told one of the men that worked with him, he said, I think I'm coming down with my dad's disease. We've not been diagnosed yet. Not been to the doctor yet. And he could be. But do you know just the fear of that can sometimes be worse than the disease itself. Mm -hmm. And he's terrified. <clears throat> he's going to have that disease. Leprosy come upon Uzziah. 52 years of king of Judah. Tore down walls. Defeated the Philistines. Enlarged all of Judah. Invented all kinds of weapons. Done all these great things. And now, leprosy is smoking. Because of his defiance under the word of God. Folks, it's not how we start. It's not what all we've accomplished. But it's how we end this race. It's what's going to matter. I want to finish well. I want to finish well. The Apostle Paul wanted to finish well. He told him, if I come back preaching any other doctrine, you cast me aside. Paul was determined to finish well. What did he say? I fought again. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That a judge shall give, but not to me only, but unto all of them that love his appearing. Sister Diane, we got to finish well. Pastor, I don't know what's going to come upon me. You know what? I don't know what's going to come upon me. You know, one of the greatest fears that any of us could have is losing our mind. I've had a call, a couple of calls this week of a man of God that for 11 years sat right here on the front row. He might have had big overalls on, but he sat on the front row. 
The man that when I was 13, 14 year old, just a kid, my dad would pick me up at school and take me to this man and I'd grab a shovel and get in a ditch and help him put in septic systems after school and he would cut the old paco off and say, Philip, don't ever let alcohol touch your lips. It's a viper. It's never touched my lips. Don't you let it touch yours. And he wouldn't say that out of anger. He'd say that out of a big old tear. Rolling down his cheek. Why? Because he loved God and he loved people and he loved me. And he didn't want me to make no mistakes. And his daughters had been battling and son taking care of him because his mind it's going places with dementia. And the other night he was up all night wanting to go see his mom and his grandma. And as much as our sister or his daughter were telling him, Dad, they're not here no more. We can't go. He just couldn't accept it. I told her I'd come by. I went by yesterday and spent some time with him. He was doing all right for a while. And he went over and he sat down by his picture window. And he's got him a little chair there and a set of binoculars. And he feeds the deer in the corner of his yard. And I can tell that's his happy place. He can go there and he can look at the deer. And he said, come here, come here. And I went up and I stood by him. I put my hand on his shoulder. And he said, you see him? Three, four, five, five of them. And I'm looking and all I see is green grass. And I said, God, the seeing a deer in that field gives him peace. Fill it up with deer. And there's another. And there's another. I still couldn't see nothing. I even got down and looked to make sure that his level of sitting in that chair, I wasn't missing nothing. And it broke my heart. And I started talking to him about the goodness of God. I said, brother, I need to get three or four people together. We just need to come down here and have church. Just sing about the Lord. He said, that'd be good. Then I walked back over and I looked. There's a deer. I saw this one. I said, praise God. God does answer prayers. And he said, look, there is one. I said, I see it. I see it. And here comes two babies. And he put a smile on his face. I called her today. I said, how was my smile? She said, oh, Midnight, he was wanting to go out and get everybody breakfast. Everybody needed to eat. He said it was a long, it was a long night. So we're praying for him. See, the devil wants to attack your mind. He wants to get you a place even at the end of the race to get you to turn from God. But I got news for the devil. It's too late. It's too late. Because all you got to do is start talking about the presence of the Lord. Brother, look at that big old tear that I used to see him. Roll down that cheek again. Uzziah, 68 year old now. If David was a man full of days at three score and ten, he was almost there. Leprosy. He didn't finish well. He had to leave the palace and go to a several house, the Word of God said. A place on the outskirts of the city where only the lepers could live. What a tough time for Uzziah. But do you know of all of the things that Uzziah did? All of the good things he accomplished. You know what the majority of the people know when they hear the name Uzziah? 
they reflect upon his death. And it really is not about him at all. But it's about the prophet, isn't it? For Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. God, help us to live our life. Help us to do good things. Help us to do great things for the kingdom. But God, let us finish well. Amen. Don't let us get to the place that at the very end we turn our back on God. And that people remember the bad part of our death than all the good part of our living. How many believe you we can do that? I believe we can do that. I believe that we can finish well. I believe that we can hold out and serve Him unto the very end. And I believe that He'll send His holy angels to escort us into the presence of God. Now Uzziah passed away and his son became king in his place. And the Word of God said he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But, oh my, when there's a but or there's an except or some kind of exception we've got to look at. It said he did not enter in to the house of the Lord. I wonder why he did not go into the house of the Lord. I believe we all know the answer. My dad tried to go into the house of the Lord. The priest withstood him. He was just wanting to make an offering unto God and he died a leper. I'm going to do the things he taught me. I'm going to live for the Lord, but I'm not going to go in God's house. You know how many people I've met in my life said that I serve God, I live for God, I'm going to go to heaven, but I'm not going to the house of the Lord? I'll tell you what, if I had every one of them that's told me that, this church would be full. I can serve God right where I'm living. I'm not saying you can't serve God without coming to the house of the Lord. I'm not going to judge you and say you can't. But I know one thing, if I wasn't in the house of God on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, it'd be a whole lot harder for me to be serving the Lord. But when I could come together with the saints of God and worship Him and hear the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God and offer prayers and sacrifices of praise unto God, it's going to help you. Amen. And furthermore, the author of Hebrews said, Forsake not the assembling of yourself together, even so much more as you see that day appearing. And may I tell you, the clouds are rolling in the heavens. God is about to come back. Amen. We're seeing Him. We've got to be serving God. We've got to go to the house of the Lord. Jotham said, I'm not going there. Look what happened to my dad. I believe probably every one of us could pick a point in our life. Look what happened to my mom or look what somebody said about my mom or my dad in the house of the Lord. I'm not going back. Or we could say, look what somebody did to me or said to me in the house of the Lord. I'm not going back. That's not the way we're to be. As Brother Joel said up here Sunday night, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to the house of God. I'm going to get into a place of worship with the Lord. And if we'll do that, God will bless you. And God will honor you for it. But you've got to make up your mind. I'm going to serve the Lord. Jotham said, I'm not going to enter into the house of the Lord. He had a son by the name of Ahaz. You know what happened when Ahaz come along? He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He built false gods. I wonder why. Probably because 
his dad ever took him to the house of the Lord. Maybe his dad sat around the lunch table and told him what happened to Uzziah in the house of the Lord, his grandpa. And he said, I ain't going there. I ain't doing that. See, church, there's a generation that's lost because there's a generation that's missing. Did you hear me? There's a generation that's lost because there's a generation that's missing. Your generation, my parents' generation, you went to the house of God. Whether you wanted to or not, you went to the house of God. My ears are floppy. Because more than one time, my mom got me by the ear. I said, we're going to the house of the Lord. <laughs> more than one time, I did something wrong in church. And she got me by the ear and took me outside. No, that's not the reason they're floppy. But she did grab hold of them time or two. More than once. Got my attention. Right. The generation follow families not to come to the house of God, make excuses. And today there's a generation out there, a generation of teenagers, a generation in their young 20s up to 30 that have no desire to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. They have no respect for their elders, no respect for authority is the reason we have the problems we have today. Amen. It's not something that just happened in 2018. We can go all the way back to the days of Uzziah, Jotham, and Ahaz, and we can see a pattern where we're at today. But you know who can change that pattern? We can change that pattern. It's not easy. But it's up to us. I was asked this week, do you have Sunday night service? Absolutely. Do you have Wednesday night service? Absolutely. Huh. Most places just have Sunday morning anymore. You know what, Brother Harold? When I was a teenager and I just turned about 16, 17 year old and got my driver's license, I wanted out of the Church of God and the Assembly of God. I wanted to be Methodist. And I become Methodist. You know why I wanted to become Methodist? Because preaching was from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock and there was no Sunday night service. There was no Wednesday night service. That meant I could be on Lake Chattooga on Sunday afternoon by 12 noon and still went to church on Sunday. <laughs> I ain't telling you no lies. Even back in the 90s, 25 minutes, I could be across the mountain on Lake Chattooga. That's what I wanted. But as I got older, conviction started coming. That wasn't the way I was brought up. That wasn't the way it was supposed to be. I found myself back in the church of God. I found myself at an altar repenting. God, forgive me. Because I was a lover of pleasures. More than I was a lover of God. Today people are lovers of pleasures more than they're lovers of God. We've got to love God with all of our mind, all of our body, all of our soul. Didn't He say love your neighbor then as yourself? Half of us don't even know who our neighbor is. Sometimes that's not necessarily a bad thing. Listen, we've got to fall in love with the Lord again. We've got to make our young people have a desire to 
fall in love with the Lord again. Does that mean we've got to have all kinds of activities this same day? Whether there's two or five hundred, we've got to have the presence of God. Amen. The anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. And He will get a hold of their heart. Just like He did me. And when I was out in sin, Jerry, I was most miserable. There's a little place between Lyman and Stairs Gap and the Clay County line called Rainbow Springs. And there's a house there you see on the right if you're going toward Franklin. That's my friend's house. Family's house. And a lot of nights there's a lot of mischief went on there that shouldn't have been going on. A lot of nights I found myself there. But you know what I found? I found myself sitting in the corner, miserable. And looking up to God, saying, God, if the trouble God sounds tonight, I won't be left behind. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Brother Luke, my children are growing up too fast. They've been in the church since they was in diapers. On the first Sunday, probably when they come home from the hospital, they found themselves in the house of the Lord. But I don't want them to serve God just because Daddy's a preacher. I want them to serve God because they fell in love with the God their daddy serves and mama. I want them to have a true relationship with Him. Undoubtedly, they're going to find their place in the days that lay ahead in places I wouldn't want them to be. But Diane, my prayer is that that same conviction that was on me that made me miserable will be upon them and that they'll make the right decisions and that they'll be in the house of the Lord. That's all we can do. Can't beat it into them. Can't drive it into them. But we've got to trust God with them. I need your prayers. We need each other's prayers because I want to see a generation Serving God, not a generation walking away from the Lord. Amen. Stand with me all over the house, Heavenly Father. Lord, the year that Uzziah died, Isaiah saw your glory. God, I don't want people to see the glory of God just when I die. God, let the glory of the Lord radiate every day of our living. God, every day, each one that's under the sound of my voice is alive. Let the glory of God radiate from us. But God, let people be drawn unto you. Father God, for you are able to seek and to save. You're able to bless them. Father, don't let us lose any more generations. But Father God, let us see that generation that is lost repent and come back unto you. Amen. And God will give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you just pray that prayer with me? Can you just lift your hand right now? Father, in this, community, in this community, a generation has been lost. A generation has been lost. A generation that once served you right here. A generation is God working in us. God, let us find them. Let them turn their heart back right to you. And God, let's change the future. God, grant it. And we'll praise you for it. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anyone need special prayer tonight? Need anything from the Lord? Let me give you some requests to pray for this week. For the Dan Burt from Cartuga J. For many years served on our pastor's council. 72, 70, maybe 74 years of age now. Always healthy. Could climb all these beams up here like a monkey. All of a sudden, recently, no strength, no energy. Had a water leak the other day, wasn't even able to find the leak. My dad had to go help him try to find his leak. Two years ago, he was with me in Alabama, able to build a church. Hanging on the trusses, a place I wouldn't dare to go. He was up there. Thanking God for his health. Today, he's in a place he can hardly even get to where he can go to church. We need God to touch him. Doctors can't explain it. They don't know what's wrong, but God does. So keep him in your prayers that God will touch him. I mentioned about Michael Wiggins. His mother passed away. His aunt's been staying with him, helping him. But there'll be a time she's got to go back home to Tennessee. And Michael's going to need the grace of God to help him. Mom's gone. Dad's gone. He's going to be all alone. So keep him in your prayers. And F.B. Vincent that I was talking about tonight, pray for him. Pray for him and God give him peace. God give him peace. And that maybe we could pray. That we could bring those things in his mind into captivity when he's not able to pray for himself. Would you do that for me this week? God bless you. Let's shake hands be friendly tonight.